Hey, what's going on, you guys? My name is The Raptor, and welcome to the Season 11 mid-season finale of Who'd Win and Why. And this time, we've got Han Solo and Chewbacca, the Rebel Alliance's co-pilots of the Millennium Falcon, going up against Rocket Raccoon and Groot, the Space Raccoon and the Space Tree of the Guardians of the Galaxy. This is the first two-on-two -two battle ever done on the show, and just like Battle Royales, in order for one side to win, both of the members of the opposing side must die, regardless of how many members of the winning team are left standing. Additionally, no spaceships will be analyzed for this random encounter. It's just two iconic duos with nothing but their own skills and tech, ready to see who can smuggle their way out of the fight. So, who'd win and why? Let's find out! <laughs> Alright, so first we're going to talk about Han and Chewie. Han was born on the planet Corellia and was orphaned at a young age, forcing him to fend for himself growing up. After living by his own terms for years on Corellia, he joined the Imperial military run by the Galactic Empire as part of an attempt to escape his planet, which is where he was given his infamous surname, Solo. Because, you know, he's alone. Solo spent years as an Imperial cadet on the battlefield fighting against the Rebel forces, and he was recognized for his superb piloting skills when compared to the other cadets. However, thanks to his constant disobeying of orders, he was eventually tossed out, and after further disobedience regarding thief Tobias Beckett, he was thrown into a pit that contained a mighty and hungry beast, otherwise known as Chewbacca. Chewbacca was a noble, though relatively small Wookiee from the planet Kashyyyk, who made it his mission to help, protect, and save his people at all costs from whatever threats they may face. This included joining the fight against Imperial battle droids on Kashyyyk in Episode 3, and traveling across worlds in order to save the Wookiees who had been put into slave labor. Though like many other Wookiees, he was eventually captured by the Empire, which was how he ended up as their beast. After Han miraculously survived his encounter with Chewbacca, the two managed to escape and become surprisingly good friends, and suddenly each of them weren't so alone anymore. And once they acquired the ship known as the Millennium Falcon after outsmarting Land Calrissian, Han and Chewie were able to take flight and became two of the most famous smugglers throughout the galaxy. Han Solo is mostly a self-taught man who hasn't received much formal training for anything in the grand scheme of things, but that doesn't mean he didn't teach himself well. Han is a master with his words, and he can easily manipulate the situation he's in in order to get himself and whoever he's with out of trouble. It's one of the things that makes him such a good smuggler, as he can outsmart those whom he tries to steal from, or weasel his way out of problems he seems to constantly get himself into. But if he can't use his wit and has no other options, he's more than willing to shoot first and ask questions later. Han's DL-44 Heavy Blaster Pistol, originally owned by Tobias Beckett, is like many other blasters of the Star Wars universe, shooting red energy beams that can kill many different humanoid alien creatures in a single shot. He's had plenty of experience with long-range combat against stormtroopers, other smugglers, and more, which greatly improved his aim and his quick draw speed over time, making him a quite proficient gunslinger. And despite Despite getting kicked out of the academy, Han is undoubtedly a very skilled pilot and knows a thing or two about the engineering as well, giving him everything he needs to successfully make his way around the galaxy. But of course, no matter what the job at hand is, Han Solo is always at his best when he's got Chewbacca by his side, and Chewie's own skills and abilities more than prove why. Chewbacca may not be the brains behind the operations, but he's got the brawn to more than make up for it. He's notorious for being able to rip people's arms clean off of their bodies, even if they're wearing considerable armor and he's strong enough to knock multiple stormtroopers out with one punch or one swing of his arm. But his strength also goes several steps beyond that, like how he can rip apart certain battle droids with ease and break various metals, shatter a big chunk of stone in one hit, and defeat enormous and or durable creatures, arguably even more dangerous than he is. Speaking of durability, Chewie has endured blaster shots from enemy fire that usually kill human targets easily, and he's taken hits from characters as strong, if not stronger than himself in battle. He even kept fighting after he got electrocuted, even though it won't take much more than a small explosion to knock him out. His signature weapon is his bowcaster, basically an energy-firing crossbow, which packs significantly more heat than most handheld blasters. Whether it's a direct hit or even if you're just near the shot, one blast from this baby can send you flying several feet away, so unless you're really fast or really tough, good luck standing up to that thing. And while he's not the most amazing strategist, he's still an expert mechanic, almost as good of a pilot as Han is 
is, and he's somehow roughly 200 years old, so it's no wonder that he's picked up on an adequate number of skills over time. Both Han Solo and Chewbacca are able to understand each other perfectly, and their experience working together has only strengthened their friendship and teamwork. Their smuggling career together lasted quite a long time, but their lives would take quite a turn when they got pulled into the fight against the Empire by Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. From then on, Han and Chewie played significant roles in a number of different battles and infiltrations in order to take down the Empire, including the Battle of Yavin, and they've accomplished some truly incredible things. They've avoided blaster fire from multiple stormtroopers at once, though we all know those guys just can't aim for shit, and Han's strategic ability was so good that he became one of the main leaders of the Rebellion after a while. Even more impressively, Chewbacca was able to hold his own against Darth Vader up close and personal for a brief period of time, which is amazing for any non-Jedi or Sith to be able to pull off. And after all of their hard work, Han, Chewie, and the rest of the Rebel Alliance had finally succeeded in taking down the Empire and saving the galaxy. And while their story was far from over after that, it just goes to show how even two unlucky crooks can help save the day from the most terrifying of threats. Han Solo and Chewbacca certainly have their fair share of abilities and accomplishments, but it's no secret that they're more cut out for smuggling and piloting than anything else. And their combat strategies together don't tend to extend too far beyond some long-range blaster combat before making making their escape. Also, Chewie has had to save Han from near certain doom on more than one occasion. So while Han of course isn't fully reliant on Chewie, he's not necessarily able to power through everything on his own either. But nonetheless, Han Solo and Chewbacca are an admirable and well-rounded duo with a strong variety of skills. Even with their faults, you can bet that they'll always find a way out of any situation. As Han Solo says, never tell me the odds. Alright, so now it's time to move over to Rocket and Groot. Rocket Raccoon originally came from Half-World, a distant planet planet where super-intelligent robots known as automatons had experimented on the animals they ruled over, giving them cybernetic and intellectual enhancements. Among these animals was a raccoon-looking specimen, later nicknamed Rocket, who eventually discovered his true origin, and with the help of the other experiments, they all managed to escape Half-World and live lives that weren't controlled by robots. Unfortunately, Rocket turned to a life of smuggling and really only cared for himself, doing whatever he wanted to across the galaxy. This led to him being captured and thrown in space space jail, where he met his cellmate, a giant walking tree who introduced himself as Groot. Groot was born in the world known as Planet X, and was a part of the Flora Colossus race. And not only was he considered a runt among his people, he got banished from his home planet after he stood up against his species' cruel custom of experimenting on other, weaker species. And of course, these aliens could only speak the words I am Groot thanks to their hardened larynx. Rocket's inability to understand him, combined with their very different personalities, meant that the two didn't exactly get off on the right foot at first. However, after some hijinks together, including their attempt to escape the prison, Rocket and Groot developed a strong sense of friendship with each other and, eventually, joined the second primary iteration of the infamous Guardians of the Galaxy together, and they quickly proved to be two of the team's most valuable players. Despite Rocket Raccoon's physical appearance, he's far more capable in battle than any Earth Raccoon. Being able to avoid gunfire and other quick projectiles like alien energy blasts, Rocket's reaction speed definitely clocks in at the supersonic level, and while he may not be able to run much faster than a normal raccoon, his rocket-powered jet boots dramatically increase his speed and maneuverability in the air. Even when he can't avoid everything that comes his way, he's tough enough to survive relatively small explosive assaults and a large number of impact forces, such as high falls and heavy hits from Starhawk, Nighthawk, and members of the Phalanx, a techno-organic alien race. He's also extremely knowledgeable about different technologies throughout the galaxy and various combat strategies. Star-Lord once even calling him the best tactician he knows, and he's a formidably skilled marksman, hand-to-hand -hand combatant, and pilot. But of course, Rocket's big draw is his huge arsenal of weapons and gadgets, which is just as powerful as it is versatile. Guns, cannons, various grenades, energy blasters, electricity blasters, sonic blasters, you name it, he's probably got something like it, and his raccoon-like senses only add to his resources. However, while Rocket has a lot of powerful weaponry, his own physical strength is extremely lacking lacking in comparison, only possessing the strength of a normal human. Thankfully for him, though, that's where Groot comes in. Being a floor colossus, Groot is naturally superhumanly strong and durable, and he's got the feats to back it up. He's strong enough to destroy a large tank and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with incredibly large and strong alien monsters, not to mention his battles with various Inhumans and Shi'ar soldiers. His durability
durability allows him to easily survive hits from Gladiator, and he can withstand almost all conventional Earth and space weaponry, including bullets, knives, certain forms of energy, and even fire, something that would normally be very effective against wood. Though he's still affected by termites somehow. A large part of his awesome defense stems from his regeneration powers, which can quickly heal and regrow parts of his body if he suffers significant damage, though some major injuries can take much longer to repair from. In addition to regrowth, Groot's plasticity lets him stretch out his limbs, grow new limbs, and he can even reshape them into nearly anything he wants, ranging from vines to melee weapons. Or he can alternatively just grow his entire body to achieve his giant form, drastically increasing his durability and power. And even after all that, Groot has some lesser known but useful traits, like how he has control over all plant life in his vicinity, which allows him to grow baby clones of himself, and he can also heal others given the right opportunity. Oh, and he also possesses a genius level intellect, which no one really knows considering the dude can't say much more than his own name. On paper, Rocket and Groot working together as a team sounds like a failure waiting to happen considering how different they are in terms of, well, everything. But despite Rocket's attitude and Groot's limited vocabulary, the two have a great amount of respect for each other and have learned to communicate very well on the battlefield. Sure, they've had their solo adventures before, but they're undoubtedly at their best when they're working together and simultaneously overwhelming their opponents, and their strengths combined make them tough to stop once they get going. As a part of the new Guardians of the Galaxy created by Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, Rocket and Groot have come face to face with nearly the entire spectrum of powerful interstellar foes, and have defeated characters who possess amazing physical, mental, and even some somewhat mystical abilities, all in the name of the greater good. They may not have started out as the most heroic, but they've turned their lives around quite impressively and learned that there's more to fight for than just themselves. Hell, Groot has proven that he's more than willing to sacrifice his own life for the right reason, and that's about as heroic as you can get. While Rocket Raccoon and Groot certainly bring a lot of versatility and power to the table, there are obviously a number of intergalactic threats that they're just not able to take down without the rest of the Guardians' help, despite how well they work together just the two of them. Them. And while they complement each other pretty perfectly when it comes to battle, that also means that either character could be at serious risk in some aspects if the other one is abruptly disabled from fighting in whatever way. They're not the strongest heroes, but the Space Raccoon and the Space Tree definitely have what it takes to steal the show and kick some ass. Rocket will be more than happy to blast you in the next week if you piss him off, and as Groot always says, I am Groot. Alright, so now that I've gone over both of these duos, it's finally time for me to say who I think would win this battle. And with so many different factors that this fight comes with, it's definitely a fun one to analyze and imagine all of the possibilities that could play out. With four heroic combatants coming from four different alien worlds, what more could you want from your epic hypothetical space battles? However, while this fight is certainly interesting on paper, I do personally believe that Rocket Raccoon and Groot would be the winners of this fight. And if you think that Han Solo and Chewbacca would win, that's great, that's totally fine, let me know why down in the comments below, but first here's my reasoning for why I think Rocket and Groot would win more often than not. While this is a two-on-two -two match, meaning that either character on one side could fight either character on the other side, it's very clear which opponents directly parallel each other, and thus how the fight would most likely unfold. So first let's start with Han and Rocket. Physical strength-wise, they both seem to be at the average or maybe even peak human level if we're being generous, but every other category easily goes to Rocket Raccoon. They can both evade blaster fire when they're at the top of their game, but Rocket's greater level of agility and far superior animalistic senses give him the overall sensory and speed advantage, and his smaller size and jet boots make him an even harder target to tag. But even more importantly, Rocket's arsenal of weaponry and gadgets completely dwarfs Han Solo's own in terms of variety and power, and this gives Rocket way more options for finishing him off quick. Han's modified DL-44 can kill many aliens in one shot, but it's absolute child's play when compared to the destructive potential of Rocket's guns grenades, energy weapons, sonic weapons, electricity weapons, and more. Of course, all of these weapons would mean nothing if it wasn't enough to overcome Han's durability, but one well-placed blaster shot is obviously enough to take him out for good, let alone huge explosives and cannons. And while Rocket may not easily be able to stand up to that kind of blaster fire either, his durability as a whole completely outdoes Han's looking at the characters he survived assaults from consistently, such as Starhawk and Nighthawk. When you're facing an opponent who's much harder to hit, has much 
much more powerful and versatile weaponry and who can take significantly more punishment than you, there's not much you're going to be able to rely on, especially when your type of quick thinking doesn't translate very well to one-on-one -on -one combat tactics. So at this point, the big question is whether or not Chewbacca would be able to overcompensate for Rocket's advantages over Han and overpower Groot at the same time. And unfortunately, taking a quick look at how he compares to Groot proves that he definitely doesn't have what it takes. Both Chewie and Groot are much more intelligent than they appear and in turn are decently resourceful, but Groot takes the cake everywhere else you look. Chewbacca has his impressive displays of strength, like ripping apart battle droids, knocking out armored stormtroopers, and crushing rock with a punch, but highballing his best feats would only come out to around 22 tons of force that he could exert. On the other hand, Groot has shown that he can easily stand up to and overpower characters significantly stronger than that, like Gorgon and Armadillo, and even when Chewie's deadly bowcaster could certainly stand a better chance of harming Groot, it really wouldn't matter thanks to Groot's durability and healing. Hell, he was tough enough to survive a blitz from Gladiator and a fall from Orbit, and he can always speedily regenerate himself if part of him is damaged or blown apart, or he could just grow additional limbs just cuz. And even still, Groot could always just grow to the size of a building to further increase his stats if Chewie does get the upper hand. Chewbacca may have taken down aliens bigger than himself with the right tools, but he's never had to put down someone as tough as a giant Flora Colossus, and Groot's strength at this size or even just his normal size would be enough to take out Chewie with enough strong or precise hits. And on top of all of that, Chewie doesn't have anything to counter Groot's plasticity and shape-changing powers, chlorokinesis, clone making, and the fact that he can heal himself and Rocket while simultaneously protecting him, whose arsenal completely outclasses Chewie's as well, by the way. Now, of course, we can throw around feats and abilities all we want for these characters, which does paint a clear picture of the fight dynamic. But at the same time, just looking at their roles within their universes and their respective experiences alone is enough to see you as the upper hand in the long run. Both the Marvel and the Star Wars universes are very powerful, there's no denying that, and all four of these combatants are nowhere near close to the top tier in terms of power. But to be entirely blunt, in a world full of deadly force users and all kinds of dangerous alien creatures, Han and Chewie are pretty close to the bottom of the food chain, and there's hardly anything to prove that they could easily compete with the bigger league heroes and villains. The expanded universe has delved into this territory a bit with these kinds of characters, but when looking at Han and Chewie themselves, they're usually not seen doing much in the ways of combat unless it's from a distance with their weaponry, with some occasional exceptions. And this especially goes for Han. On the other hand, Rocket and Groot not only have far more actual combat experience in regards to teaming up, solo missions from a distance and up close, these guys are designed to be able to consistently keep up with physically intimidating galactic characters in the universe like Nighthawk and Gorgon, which is why their weaponry and abilities are written to be so much more powerful. Of course, comparing Jedi and Sith to any number of higher-end Marvel characters is like comparing apples to oranges, but ultimately, Han and Chewie can't usually compete with the characters that pack more heat than they do in a fight, and Rocket Raccoon and Groot definitely stand among those characters. I guess the best way to describe this is, Han Solo and Chewbacca's story is about a couple of smugglers becoming your average rebels, whereas Rocket Raccoon and Groot's story is about a couple of smugglers becoming your average galaxy-bound superheroes. And I think that says a lot on its own. Overall, all of these characters are great at what they do and arguably make up the best intergalactic duos there are, but when push comes to shove, Han and Chewie don't have any counters they can use against Rocket and Groot's plethora of advantages. When you compare any of the combatants directly or just as a whole, Han and Chewie simply aren't naturally prepared to take on characters who have far more at their disposal head-on. As good of pilots they may be, I feel that Rocket and Groot's general superior power, durability, versatility, speed, intelligence, and experience would be more than enough to overwhelm them. So, in my opinion, the winners are Rocket Raccoon and Groot. So guys, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please give this video a huge like. I always appreciate the likes. You can leave a comment. If you could subscribe, that'd be great as well. If you want to see more who'd win and why, you can click the box on the right. Or if you want to see more of what the channel has to offer, you can click the box on the left. But no matter what you guys do, your view is plenty of contribution. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And next time on Who Win and Why, we've got Gru going up against Megamind. See you all then.